Hi, I'm Nana. And I'm Bunkio. And this is African.American. This is a show about immigrants and children of African immigrants living in the United States. Today, we are talking about marriage and children, uh, specifically within the African and African.American communities, how it's looked up to and idolized, and what happens when neither of those are things that you want or are in the cards for you. So uh, we can start off with a little bit of stats about the state of marriage, I guess, in the U.S., um, one thing that's interesting to note for our generation and things that people have probably heard on news and other places uh, is according to the NIH that the median f- may age for women for marriage is going up. So it's now, well, as of 2015 or so, probably even older. <laughs> it's thanks to also folks take, getting grad degrees and choosing to wait. Oh, yeah. No, I think that that is the case. Right. Um, But the the NIH article that um, we're quoting is like it was the median age for marriage for women was 27 in 2015, 2016. Um, I'm assuming that it's probably creeped up a little bit higher. Also, because for this past year, a lot of people had to cancel their weddings. So they're 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 you know, they're all going to be a bit older when they get married. Um, But the median age used to be. 24 in 1990 so that's a you know pretty big jump um as far as different racial groups though of course there's always differences so the median first age for marriage for black women is 30 uh versus versus 20 yeah 26 for white women um uh and that was in 2010 um but i i see no reason why those things have changed or come converged together um and then there's this stat about women and whether or not they have been married at least once by the age of 40 and for pretty much every other racial category pretty high likelihood um for it's like nine out of ten white women and asian women have ever been married by the time they turn 40 uh, eight out of ten Latinx and about three quarters of American Indian slash Native Alaskan. I think they I think they mean Native American people in general. Uh, women have been married by the time they're forty, but for Black women, it is about two thirds. Within the same um, study, if you've controlled age at any point in time, I think they also mentioned that. Fewer than two thirds of Black women uh, reported having married uh, at least once. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons for that, um, and I think these ideas and stats. You know, there's all the other ones about how many Black women are are are, mar- are, are married and how many are single moms and blah 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 blah. And I don't know how much of that is slicing and dicing of things to fit a narrative. Um, I mean, that's a good point. You do wonder yeah. how much of it is to... Yeah, a few years ago, it was like, why are black women so unlovable? Excuse me? <laughs> uh, also, to paint the picture... Black men dating black out. Or dating out or are in jail. Um. Yeah, I, mean, I think that those things are, are, are there. And of course, the black family, the average black family in the U.S. doesn't really necessarily look the way that it might have looked in the 50s or 60s, where maybe family units... I don't know, traditional family units had a different kind of structure. Um, But with all of that aside, it's just good to kind of go over these stats and think about it in terms of the African dot American community, because we are in the U.S. and we are black. Um, And I think we do know that there, there is a distinction at first with those first generations. But the more generations that you spend in the U.S., the more African dot Americans stats basically are the same as african-american stats Mm -hmm. um and i think also a piece of this that i I guess is hinted at right we do say okay the the median age for women getting married uh is older all across the board and we kind of ascribe that to like you said education and uh better social standing just women choosing not to you know Get married yeah. and pop out kids at like 18, which was more the norm maybe in the 50s and 60s. Well, because marriage was, people got married for economic 
stability. I mean, I still do. Yeah. I, I absolutely. Think well, more so, more so back then than I think. Then, yeah. then now, yeah, because the, the woman was expected to, you know, be a homemaker. Um, so then, but in the African community, uh, maybe we can just talk about that a little bit. Um, I would wager that the figures are. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think that the stats for Black people? Um, do you think that the African community, or let's start with Africans first, like African immigrants, do you think mm-hmm. they tend to be more men? Because we tried to look up stuff, we didn't find anything that was like categorical about that. Tend to be more likely to be married. I would. I think sure, so. Perhaps. There is such a focus on getting married, and getting married is also linked to procreation. And there is always this hyper. I would say hyper hyper focus focus of it within our communities of having that family because family kids are all a sign of some sort of social status. Well, um, yeah, even to to the you know even more so than actual like degrees and things that you can like physically accomplish on your own. So (laughs) there is definitely the pressure there, Um, and I don't know if if there's also a generational difference too. I don't know if this younger generation, even if you controlled for, you know, whether or not they were um, their first generation or immigrants, I I wonder how much of it, how much of that stands. Um, Well, I mean, I guess we, I mean, we can't talk about the entire community, but we can talk uh about ourselves, right? So um, definitely think that the reason why I said I'm not 100% sure is because I do think that to be real, there are a lot of interesting setups in African communities in terms of marriages, like definitely new people. You know, I definitely knew uh, like polygamous structures, people who are, you know, the same age, grade, same last name, but got different mamas. Um, And the reasons for that, I think even within Africa, right? Like we, we, we've talked about that before, like the sugar mom, sugar daddy kind of setups. And so there is I'm talking this... about those setups and not to cut you off, but are you talking about, to just clarify, are we talking about those setups within the United States or? Yes, yes okay. because those okay. carry over, right? Mm-hmm. So the people I'm talking about, same, you know, when I talk about people being the same age and having the same last name, but having two different moms, it is because their dad was with two different women in a particular period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's a case of marriage and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's traditional marriages where people are traditional as in cultural, but not, not traditional as in uh, monogamous situations. Um, a lot of those things do have carryovers um, on the state side. And so it would be really interesting to see where that falls. I think for African communities, it is the goal and it's the idealized like structure but i wonder particularly for west africa that can speak of i don't know about north or east that um there are a lot of these alternative family structures as well and so i i i wonder to what extent africans are pulling down the figures for the black community or Mm. or the ones that are keeping the numbers yeah. up as they are, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I think for even for our generation, it's still very much like, I know tons of African dot Americans who got married at like 24, 25, right? I mean, Same. still yeah. 24, 25. Yeah. Um, there's still the expectation that you will. Um, and so... I mean, I don't see us, maybe maybe with our generation, our children, we won't have those same kinds of expectations, but I feel like that is still an expectation in general of African communities. Yeah, it is. Um, it definitely is. And so the the issue comes in of like, what happens when you don't want that? Like, how how <laughs> how, how do people <laughs> react? How hostile are they? Because, you know, people who get married within a month, right? A lot of, you know. A month or two. And it's not just Africans, but a lot of communities. Generally, yeah. Baby? Baby? Yeah. yeah. Baby? Yeah. Why you don't have a baby? <laughs> if you choose not to have kids or yeah. if you cannot have kids, it becomes a problem, right? It becomes a problem. Um, it's like, you know, even if you say it, I remember I think I said it once and my mom said, don't say that. I said, what if I don't want, I, 
I, I do, but I, you know, to even begin the pondering of yeah. whether or not you want it, I, I don't feel like we have spaces where you can really do that. Yeah. It is expected well, that you do it. Um, With the marriage question, if, if you were to choose not to get married, people start, like, setting you up feeling like they have to take that step for you. To help you out. For you to help you out. Um, or so even even yeah. more so too, as you get older as a woman, there is this kind of like, well, girl, just anybody will do, <laughs> anybody will do, and it's like, mm, no, that is also not the case. So I guess <laughs> you're expected to kind of drop your expectations. Huh? Well, it's such yeah. a foreign, yeah, it's such it's a foreign concept. Uh, I would say, I, I think, I, I can't speak for all, I do think that certain African communities really, really look to marriage as like an ideal, um, I'd say with mine, my sense with the Sierra Leonean community is like, it's important to have a kid though. Like I know of stories of people who, you know, maybe they didn't get married, but people, people are still like, at least have one child, at least I you mean, know. that's what happens when people don't, people, people choose not to. That's what people, people say, yeah. at least have. I, at least go have. with, like, but how are you going <laughs> to, what are the mechanics? I mean, obviously, like, you, you don't need that, but, like, what are the, the mechanics yeah. of that? Um, and so there is, so we basically acknowledge that there is this fixation with continuing the lineage, having a kid. If you can't, adopting one, I think, is also something that's um encouraged like um do we do we truly encourage at least within do we truly encourage adoption (laughs) i think so i know lots of families who and it's that they didn't necessarily adopt because they couldn't have children but like sometimes it's adopting within the larger family adopting a niece or nephew a cousin picking a kid from africa and bringing them here and basically raising them as if they were your own um or hopefully raising them as if they were your own, but raising them nonetheless. Uh, I think that that is something that is uh, encouraged. And I feel like I've heard framings of like, oh, she couldn't have a child. So uh, she took her cousin's kid and she said, that one's mine. And, you know, I mean, essentially her cousin's kid is like raised by that person. I've, I've, I've heard stories like that in my community. Even within mine, I've heard a lot of stories about that, about folks uh, taken in. I, I typically, I guess, don't, don't view it as adoption, but. I mean, you took the child. Yeah. Raised the child. <laughs> you finance, you gave them food. You give them clothing. Uh, you don't formally adopt. Sometimes there isn't I mean, a formal yeah, adoption. I'm not talking about paper. There's no, yeah. well, I, I mean, no, when, when, you, when you said it, that's what. Yeah, I think in the African context, there's no paperwork. But if you're going to bring the kid here, there is some sort of paperwork. You're their legal. If I think if you're becoming their legal guardian, then you're based, like, they don't know who their mama and daddy are. Or they see their parents like once a year or once every few years. Then you've adopted the child. No? Regardless of what they might call you. And a lot of times they do call them mummy or daddy. But they don't even call them... They might have two sets of names, right? For like the guardian and then the name that they call their parents. Um, I do think that in African communities, even when you adopt a kid, the kid still knows it tends to be that way. Yeah. Unless it's those like fake organ, those orphanages that steal kids from their parents and then send them to Belgium, which was a thing. But I digress. As you were talking about childless marriages and or folks who choose not to have kids, I mean, the first thing that I thought of, at least, was how that blame is always placed on the woman for not being able to have a child. Yeah. And that's like modern- how it becomes a bad omen for, for, for the marriage itself. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, that's just that's just patriarchy. Right. And that's all around um, the same thing with like gender, although we know that it is the man who determines the gender of the child. It's a little bit different when you to make the conscious decision not to. Because I think, you know, not being able to, you still can be within that African framework of you want that, right? And we know there's so many movies about people who go to, you know, churches, medicine men, healers, all that kind of stuff, you know, um, sometimes just, you know, who relate to those Bible stories about women who couldn't have kids, the, the, the Rachels, is it Rachel? Yes, Leah was a sister. So I don't know, that story comes to mind that then like, um, I, you know, all these names that, that come together, but there are a lot of women in the Bible who couldn't have kids and then they could. So 
whoop, whoop. But there aren't many, are there, there are no Bible stories about women who did not want to have them. And I think we don't have any models for that. Um, we have to look to the American context to find them, right? Yeah. Um, and even with those people, the framing is always like that. Like I think about Kamala Harris, VP, and I often see when people talk about her, they say, oh, well, she she got married too late to have them. Did she say that? Did Perhaps she, say- she made the choice. Some people have, I mean, I, I know some African Dutch Americans who've, had the, who've made the conscious choice not to... They know they know that they don't want any kids. But do um, they do they talk about it? Because they do I don't talk about it. They have. Conver- I, I mean, I don't know outside <laughs> whether or not they have that conversation outside, for example, with their families and whatnot. But I mean, within their friend circle, they talk about it. Yeah, uh, I don't. I I don't know any. I I, I have non black, non African dot and non African friends who have said it. I remember the first one I met. It took a while. I, I would say even for me, this was years ago, and I was just like, oh. Like because this person in particular, she's like very religious individual, very devoted Catholic, like you know, no meat on Fridays type of Catholic. And she said, "I don't want it." And I was like, "Wow!" Just because of the religious background that she comes from, I would assume, um, because there is that focus on family and that encouraging people to do it. I mean, for me, at the end of the day, I think if you don't want them, knowing is such a wonderful thing. Because there's so many people who really ought not to do this, and they go where they not- have kids anyway. <laughs> and it Some is people very- who don't who, to, who don't want to have kids, but are feel forced by societal norms to have the kid, and it makes them unhappy. But well, yeah, I think there's those, but there's also the category of people who never even think about it. And I think maybe that's what, when it comes to marriage and when it comes to children, I I I do think that we often kind of move on autopilot. I know mm-hmm. I did for a while. Um, and you just assume, it's like college. You just assume you're gonna go. You grow up with these assumptions that X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if most of us actually really sit down with ourselves and say, well, what is it that I want? Am I am I going through these motions? Am I, you know, it's in the same way as like, am I pursuing this major or am I pursuing this field? Yeah. Am I pursuing this job because I want it? Or am I pursuing it because this is what society has told me is, yeah, is the expectation. Um, And I think if it's helpful to do that for jobs and school, it would be really helpful to do that in terms of life choices that involve other people, creating other human beings (laughs) and or joining finances and homes and all that other kind of stuff with someone else. So I guess, um, what is what is your take, Nance? Have you sat and had that reflection, your conversation with yourself about what it is that you want and whether or not you want <laughs> children, marriage? I haven't sat down and actually like thought through it that extensively, but given the profession that I'm in, speaking of role models, you see, you do see a lot of models of women who to be able to get to the top of the profession most of them don't have kids they may be married but they don't have kids and so like in that context seeing that maybe that's why within some of my friend circles we've had this conversation because it makes you start wondering and thinking like depending on the path you choose within within the profession you may not want especially if you desire to be a hands-on parent versus having your 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 spouse Yeah, or somebody, oh, or, or your spouse. Yeah, yeah. So I know that I do want kids. I mm-hmm. know that I I want to get married. It, it takes introspection. I think it also depends on the person. Um, of if somebody tends to be an introspective person who will sit there and you know think about certain things in life in this society, we're always on autopilot and we're always doing things and checking the boxes because that's what's expected so it's like in any society not just this one right um so but most definitely so it's like you know you go to school you you when you're in school like ideally you search for or you look for your husband you grab unless you go to women's college then you kind of like the numbers are just not in your favor if you're a heterosexual woman and you go to women's college that's just not the best that's not the best 
way to achieve your goal. And I wish that I had, I say that as someone who, who didn't think that part through. Um, <laughs> because that's what you're thinking about. I mean, you're, you're thinking about getting into the, the, the best institution <laughs> and that would work for you. Like that's your, and that's how we should be thinking. Like, why should I be picking my college based off of, off of that? Um, I think that it would be, so I guess at that juncture, I will share the way that I've thought about it because I have done some introspection a lot later in life than I should have. I think that for me, I just got to a point where I, 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 I had been going on autopilot for forever. And of course, yes, it was school and then it was grad school. And it was like trying to set my life up and pay off my student loans and be the kind of person that someone would want to be with or to, to, to be with the kind of person that I thought I deserved to be whatever. These really weird conceptions of what that phase of my life would look like. And I think that for a lot of us, we push so much in school and in professional life because those are things that we can control, right? I want to get an A in this test. I'm going to study and then I'm going to get in the test. But you cannot control, like, you can study men all you want or women, whatever is your, whatever floats your boat. You can date out the wazoo, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the end result of the kind of partner that you want. So for me, as someone who didn't really start dating seriously until 30, I did take the time probably around 32, 33. So, so I didn't start seriously until about 30. I was looking around and not wasn't happy with what I was getting. I really had to think through starting dating, looking around, not getting happy with the results. Why? Because when it came to jobs, when it came to schools, when it came to, you know, projects, fellowships, whatever, I wanted it. I worked for it. I got it. Finish. Simple. Right. But when it is a person, a whole other human being who has dreams, you can't control, ask, yeah. you can't control it. And you uh. think you know what you want. You know what you want on paper. I knew what I wanted on paper. Reality and paper are two different things. And I think that you, when you are in a pool with other people doing that same thing of not really knowing yourself and knowing what you need, you know what you want, but you don't know what you need. Um, that's what pushed me to do the introspection because I was like, mm. you know what? This is bullshit. I remember. I remember when you were you you yeah. were you were doing not, this introspection, and you were like, "No, no, you not, better start doing this early. <laughs> like, yeah. don't wait. Be like, me. don't wait. <laughs> That's what I tell people. Don't wait. Really think and, and and figure out what works for you. And for me, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give this some more goes. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. But I had an end date, an end age, a certain birthday. I was like, if I don't find a person by this date, I'm gonna adopt. And my other some friends were like what 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 like i was like look i'm looking at i'm i don't know because the process itself right it's like buying a house all these things that you've, you've never done it it's complicated you need to read up on it you need to understand what the cost will be you, you, you make it so mechanical i think <laughs> for me you know i think this episode is like marriage or children what if one yeah. of both are not for you i realized that even if i want it if it's not in the cards Mm. then what do I do then? Am I less of a person? Because the African standard or the patriarchal standard is it doesn't really matter what you've achieved um, on paper, your degrees and all that. Are you married? Do you have children? Yeah. And do you have a son? So I had to really wrestle with myself in that, like, do I care about, I mean, my family doesn't really care about sons, but there is the community, you know, um, hope and prayer for you to be blessed with you know be fruitful and multiply to have many many children yeah. and being realistic about what you want and what your options are and also how like no matter what life you have it needs to be for me whatever no matter what life i have i want to be able to have a fulfilling one i want yeah. to say i did the things that i want and for me a grangy dude who, you know, mm, he don't beat me. That wasn't enough for me. And, and no shame to anyone. But that's the thing. You, you that, that was what I was about to say. You had expect you, when you were, when you mentioned that, you know, when you got to 30 and you started doing that introspection, you realize other people around you were not for you. Yeah. Um, and and that true. takes you having expectations and not, not, not lowering your expectations. One thing that I see or that I've been seeing is that a lot of folks, 
getting married to people and i don't know if how much of that is because they've changed versus how much of that is that they feel like they need to get married um and so i'll take whoever you know wants to marry there's a trend of a lot of folks dating and or marrying people that they would otherwise you would think that they would otherwise yeah not marry. dating people who seem like they just said i want to get married and they just grabbed the first person and moved on and i think you know if you read these like dating books and all that kind of stuff there are, there are people who theorize at what age men versus women do that stuff and blah 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 i think that yeah it's because people don't really sit and people you know there is there's so many things and i think with any choice in life that you make there's a trade-off mm -hmm. and if you are at a certain age or a certain point and you really want to have a kid or all your friends have kids or your family's really pushing you to get married or your family has picked the person who you should marry because that happens yeah. a lot yeah. um it, it it makes it tricky um but i think that it's just really helpful to to really think for yourself about what it is that's important. I think that things can change and your ideas about what it is that you want should shift. I would say that I didn't, I even, you know, the first layer is like, what is it that I really want? To me, no matter what, having a having children, and maybe that's the African in me and in my community in me is more important almost than having a married partner. If that mm -hmm. happens, then fantastic. If not, then okay. And so then the next thought was, well, if this is not, the, if the, if it's the case that you don't get that person, what do you do? I'm like, okay, well, I would, you know, I would adopt or, you know, whatever. You, 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 you look through those, all those options and come to it. But I think that if, 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 for instance, marriage is for you, but children are not, there's still the thought of like, well, what are the things that are really important in having a, in a partner? I do think that sometimes this idea of standards is so, it's like Play-Doh. It really just depends on who you're talking about. So, mm -hmm. you know, we went to a school and we knew people. I heard, I don't know if you heard the saying, like for some some women would say, if he does, if his school doesn't start with an H and end with an R word or start with an M and end with an IT, I'm not checking for him. And I always <laughs> thought that that was, hey, if that's the standard or the the bar that you set for yourself, then more power to you. But I, to me, for me, I felt that that was a tricky one. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I say, uh, when I talk about like when people want things on paper, that's also part of the issue. I also had some ridiculous ideas about. <laughs> I don't know. You have you. Uh, I didn't want to go into them because they were dumb. I, I, some of them were dumb. I wasn't like a stickler. I wasn't one of those like. <laughs> It needs to be Wait, what are these ideas? What what are these ideas that you're now deeming uh, ridiculous? So I think about like things like I really thought that marrying somebody in the STEM field was what I needed. I needed somebody who That's was in like, engineering or in chemistry to balance out my like humanities, social sciences half, and to ensure that my children would get the right gen just dumb <laughs> stuff. That, <makes> <laughs> that is so interesting. <laughs> And so well, for a lot, a lot of times, like the people that I've dated, engineers, engineers, was engineers. Was it because of where you are or was it, was it because? This is throughout like, life. It is, um, it is based on, oh, oh, so I see mechanical engineering, material science, computer science. Oh, chemistry. Huh? Oh, physics. Like. I think for me, on one hand, it is about like just not wanting someone in my field. Like I've never wanted. No, that's that's. I've never wanted someone who was into Middle East studies. Like I, you know, going to grad school and stuff. I never walked in the classroom and was like, "Ooh, I love the way you talk about that Israeli-Palestinian conflict." I don't want. I don't want that twenty-four-seven. And I do think, I think, I dialed it not dialed it back, but what I what I really was get. I had to think about what is it that I'm really getting at, and what is it that I really want from this. And at its core, there was the idea of, I want somebody who has interests that are outside of mine that I can learn from yeah. and who can potentially learn from me. And so that's the way it got tweaked, right? So like, okay, now this, okay, friend, this is weird. This is not a, this is a free 
this is just as ridiculous a rule as someone who wants only someone but who's six foot. Did, 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 you, did you choose the folks you were dating based off of that, or were you just attracted to people with with such brains? I, I mean, think, about, I think it gave them an extra. You got an extra gold star if that was what you were studying. And it's not like I didn't go on dates with people from other fields, and even my current fiance is. It's, it's in a space that's tangential to it, but it's not exactly it. Um, and I think that, again, just having that time to think things through, um, especially with us, because sometimes communities put that pressure. Just as parents put pressure for you to have a certain degree, for you to have a certain kind of background, there's there pressure for you pressure, to have a certain yeah. kind of partner as, partner as well. And then, you know, when you get even into like, certain communities or ethnic groups that are like, you can't marry that ethnic group versus this ethnic group. Just really just having that time to think it through, like what, why is it that I want this and what's at the core of what I want and then move from there. So like even for the M, whatever, H end with Harvard, M starts with M, I, M, M starts, M starts with IT. I think what they were saying was they want somebody who is ambitious yeah, um, I, th- I, th- I think that's who's ambitious, who's driven, who is. I, I think that those, yeah. To go to MIT or Harvard to, to have that. this accomplished yeah. or driven person. So, but that's need- why I was asking like, how much of that has to do with the community you're around versus. Well, I, I think, I mean, for them, I don't know. For people who operate on that, I have no idea. And like, obviously, if you come from a certain social strata, if your family has always been. You know, of all the men in your family always came from this or that, then that's that's one thing or the other. And it is a reason why people send their kids to elite institutions. No, that that is what it is. Um, but I think for me, I really benefited from and that's why I'm always a champion of really just sitting and thinking with yourself. What if and sitting and thinking, OK, well, this is what I really want, not because mommy said so, not because daddy said so. Not because, you know, all your siblings got married at 25 to lawyers or whatever, but because that's what you really want. And there's a, for me, realistic, logical meaning behind it, even if it's like, you know what, it's just what I like. I don't know. I think that certainly comes with age. As you get older, you start, you start putting that, well, (laughs) let me speak for myself. (laughs) You start being intentional. Correlation and causation, babe. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Let me speak. I'm gonna speak for myself. Let me let me not generalize this, but you start being more intentional about you know who you're dating, why you're dating. Like you, you put you put thought behind it rather than you know just oh I like this person for so long. Oh they are fun to hang out with. Yeah. Well, see again for me because I started so late, I never had that. Let's fun fun hang hang out for where. Years old. Oh, me, me, I'm very attracted to b- people who banter, <laughs> who I can talk to. <laughs> if I want banter, I'll turn on MSNBC. Please get out of here. <laughs> that's one thing that's important to me. I didn't, I didn't see when you were saying your science and in your engineering stuff. I didn't see anything. Eh? <laughs> that's one thing that's My, yeah, you need to rethink <laughs> your priorities. <laughs> I said that was something that I held on to in the past. I'm not saying I hold on to it. I said that's something that, you know, that's important to me. It's not like I'm holding on to it, but it's important. It's important that we can sit and chat and, you know, go back and forth. Yeah, but you don't necessarily need, I, I just mean with that, right? Like if it, it's only an issue if you say, well, I really like banter. So I need a PhD in philosophy. Oh. Right? I then you put yourself in a box where it's like, uh, that doesn't necessarily need to be the thing. I guess going back to it, yes, reflecting and trying to decide what it is that you really want and what it is that you really need. And then the next piece of that is figuring out with your, figuring out how to tell your family if you You, you have you to can. tell your family. I, I, don't, I don't prescribe to that whole thing of if you choose not to have kids, if you choose not to get married, that you have to. Why is it that you have to have that conversation with your family? I don't. So you don't have to. You free, you grown. We, we, this, this America is a free country, kind of. Um, and <laughs> but <laughs> but I do think that it is 
helpful. So you just don't get those same nagging thoughts. Well, people, people, whether or not you have those conversations with folks, people will still bring it up. I think that bringing it up will help normalize the idea that people have make different choices in life. But so it's not, no, I, if, I have so if you seen not, it. If you choose not to have children, instead of aunties going around saying she's barren, she's barren, like it would be really helpful to, it will be helpful for younger generations to see someone who says, no, actually I choose not to, I don't want to, I'm very happy to be an aunt or I'm very happy, I don't, oh, I don't like kids or whatever it is that is well, kind of like yeah. your reasoning. I think that that's helpful um, mm -hmm. for people to see that and know that like you can make different choices in life. I, I think in the same but way- I, that I mean, I think it will be helpful for those, for the younger generations, as you said, but I don't think it will stop the, folks it, around you, the older it, generation, asking questions and making those comments about. Of course the they won't. And some of them will never be able to understand because they just don't live in, you know, it's like boomers and college debt, right? They don't understand because school costs 50 cents when they went to college and they don't understand why people are graduating with $100,000 in debt. Um, but talking about it normalizes it. And for yeah. the people who are experiencing those things, you know, you're not on the margins. It's the same thing as like you were gay. It be it is very hard, but it's really helpful um, for people who can do it to tell their families so they understand and give the families sometimes a chance to actually wrap their minds around that and embrace the children because then when your little brother or your little cousin or whoever comes, you know, comes out. Have you to look to. It, yeah, they have, they have, they have a standard to look to. And it's not, there's not this feeling of, oh, I'm the only African in the world, or I'm the only this in the world that has this. No, it's actually more common than we let it be, if yeah. that makes sense. I mean, within our generation, I, I, as I mentioned, I know of a few who have made that who know that they don't want to get married. They may want to have a partner, but they don't want to get married. They don't want kids. And they talk about it. Um, so they, I, I don't know how much of that too is seeing marriages around them and seeing how unhealthy they may be and Maybe knowing that they don't want to. Are. <laughs> well, I am just, you know. Seeing how unhealthy a lot of them are. And knowing that they don't want to deal with certain things. So, and so therefore, I'm not going to get married. Like, I will have a partner, but I'm not going to tie myself to, I'm not going to get married in that sense and have to deal with that. If, if it's unhealthy, where if it's unhealthy, I can't just pack and leave. When you're married and you have kids, I feel like within the African community, there's like an, ex an expectation that you stay and close your eyes and bear no it for the what. sake of the kids. That is a problem for the kids in the long run. That's a problem That's for both. I mean, we had a few months ago, right? There was a, a, a pastor who um, had a history, oh, a Ghanaian yeah. pastor, right? A history of abuse and all that to his wife. And when she finally left him, he went and, you know, killed her. Um, so that is also an issue. But I think that that is a little bit different, right? Like if you don't want to get married because all the marriages around you are dysfunctional, I feel like that is something that can be helped with some therapy because just because those were like that doesn't mean that yours has to be, but there has to be some conscious reflection, probably some work that you need to do yeah. there to think about the kinds of patterns that there exist in your family and in your choices that might lead you to that, right? Um, the, it's like, uh, what's that thing? Like those stats, like um, teen pregnancy. Having a mom who was a teen mom makes it more likely that you will. Having a parent that's an alcoholic yeah. makes it more likely that you will be, but you, you, I mean, maybe with alcohol, I, I don't know, maybe with alcohol, it doesn't mean that you never can drink a glass of champagne, right? It just means that you have to be conscious about it and you have to make some choices and look and hopefully get the kind of support that you need to be able to have to break the cycle basically somebody like that would need to see have seen a healthy marriage to even know that that's possible i mean so, you can see barack and michelle obama you can see well, how do you know what's going on and that's the other thing too sometimes like <laughs> how do you know what's going on in both <laughs> marriages because sometimes somebody may be seeing that within within uh, marriages around them but outwardly nobody knows what everybody thinks that marriage but, is healthy. yeah but at the end of the day that's what it is is with any situation right like oh, domestic yeah. violence anything yeah. i think that if if your reasoning is that you don't want to get hurt 
then maybe there's some work that can be done there on the emotional piece to understand that it doesn't have to be that way and it doesn't have to end that way. My point is there's a difference between saying marriage is just not for you. It's not and it's something that's been your particular goal or children are not for you. It's not something you've wanted and saying, oh, you don't want to do that because your parents got divorced and it was really ugly or because your dad, you know, whatever, your mom cheated on your dad, your dad cheated on your mom. That to me, that's just two very different sets of logic there. And that other logic is you trying well, to true. make the risk averse choice. But it's like, yeah. why would your part, your partner doesn't have to be like your mom. Your partner doesn't have to be like your dad. What happened to them doesn't have to happen to you. Mm-hmm. Now there's probability, but if you know that and you are actively make working and making those conscious decisions, then perhaps it's, it's, it, 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 it will end well for you. Um, by the end of the day, you have the right to pick whatever you want. If that's why you yeah. don't want to, then that's your choice. <laughs> then that's your choice too. Um, and yes, the tongues are going to wag anyway because people are people don't talk with the with, they're with gossips the and they just have nothing else to say, right? Like you could buy corn and they'll be like, "Oh, they bought corn for three seventy five, right?" Just just because they just need something. That's human nature too. Yeah. We have to have I... conversations. We have to have something to talk about. We have to put people in boxes and think about how we put them. One other thing that I've I've also noticed is people who've been married uh, before getting a divorce and or losing their spouse and choosing not to get married again and the conversations around that, um, especially when... when I love it again. You can have more. Yes. Yeah. Especially, I think, more so that when that person does not have kids, the person who's married before um, mm-hmm. doesn't have kids. And the way in which we have those conversations, especially around people, it, it can be very hurtful. Yeah, when when I, mean, I see people doing that, I'm just like, you need to always have in the back of your mind that people are making a conscious choice, a conscious decision. The way in which you're framing certain things you're saying may be hurting the person. Yeah. So you got to be I careful. Mean, that was the love of their life and it didn't end well and they don't. The point, the, the point is if you're not in the mindset to do something there's it it just doesn't make sense yeah there's few things worse than you know let's say a few things the idea of someone getting married just because uh, their family pressured them into doing it when they didn't really want to it just doesn't usually doesn't end too well it's not even just a family even societal pressures of anything, but I think yeah. when you, when you do something because you feel forced to do it, as opposed to you wanted to do it, it just yeah. feels different. Whether it ends well or it doesn't end well, it's just yeah. not a not a great feeling. But that's something that our community needs to work on because, um, and we've talked about this before, the respect for elders and people wanting what's best for you, but wanting what's best for you within the framework of the world that they live in and understand it is always hard. It's like, whatever word cer- in 19- This certainly falls within that category of- Yeah, like that worked for you in 1975. I don't know how you got your man, but that was 1975. This is 2020. A lot of things have changed. Um, a lot of contexts have changed. I mean, I think I've mentioned before, even having conversations with my mom about online dating and she goes, oh, that just sounds like so much work. Yeah, it's not, you don't, you don't necessarily go to your high school prom and, you know, whatever, meet someone in your Those house. Social environments are no longer readily available. They're, they're just not, it's not the same because in high school, you're not really socialized to find your high school sweetheart, right? You're, you're trying to get to college and, you know, maybe have some sort of transformation in college. Maybe you're trying to Mac people um, on people in college. Maybe you're just not ready to be tied down. Maybe you do want to date for fun. Maybe you're you know, exploring all kinds of things, your sexuality, who you are, blah, 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 blah. You just have these different stages that just make each generation very different from the next one. Um, and it is hard to keep that in mind, right? To have that grace and kindness towards some of these aunties. Yeah. So sometimes their hearts are in the right places, but they just can never understand what it is to be you. Right, and they want. Or, or sometimes people people understand very very well, and they just <laughs> choose. <laughs> and they're just choosing to be that asshole. I'm trying um, to give some people the benefit language. of the doubt. No, no, that's that is also true, and so it is a it's a hard line to walk. But I just think about for the elders, or the other people 
in the community who really want something for you Mm -hmm. and they you know and their advice goes to that I think that's the same thing with like oh just get married anybody um (laughs) as you mentioned before you may go and have a kid (laughs) you don't need to get married before kids I want my kids you know at this point I just want a grandchild (laughs) like just you know bring it like how you know whatever it is that you want to do it's fine just get married and you know have one or two and then you can you can move on yeah (laughs) Like I've heard a lot of that, some of that advice, sitting there listening in on advice people are giving. Uh, go, just, you know, have one or two more and then you can just, you know, relax and do what you want. I, I'm like, what if the person what? is unhappy in the situation that they're like, Why do I want to add to a few more human yeah. beings to a situation that already isn't great? Yikes. Yeah. So, you know, I say I give them some grace, but take some of that guidance with a grain of salt. But first and foremost, take some time to really think about what it is that you want, who it is that you want, and what and who it is that you want to be. But yes, I was about to say that takes, <laughs> you need to take that a step further of who are you and who do you want to be? <laughs> because yeah. that is important in choosing marriage and or in choosing your partner. That yeah. is a critical piece. Yep. Don't, you know, and Nans, you hear this all the time from me, but like, you know, be, pick your list of things that you want, but pick them wisely. Think about the things that will transcend time and the things that are the truest to your character and your moral compass and what it is that you want out of life. I think a lot of people will find that you know, needing someone who's six foot seven may not be. <laughs> may not. <laughs> you know, you five foot two. Do you really need somebody six foot seven? Uh, well, so that when you when you have the kids, you know, the kids are not on the shorter side. <laughs> you got people who got all kinds of ranges. I know of people who married somebody because they was fine and they wanted the kids to look like that. The kid ended up looking like the other parent. As a classmate of mine in high school uh, used to say, you know, two pretty people can make an ugly. (laughs) It's very, it's very possible. And so, I mean, you know, I say this, and of course, like you, you you have your things that are pros or things that you like, but like at its core, it should really be about like those things that are most compatible with you and what you want out of life and And your values. That takes you knowing yourself. In knowing yeah. who you are yeah. and I, or who you need to be or would like to be. Yeah, I used to say it in college. If what you want is tall, dark, and handsome, but what you need is short, hairy, and funny, you're never going to see him because you're always going to be looking up for the tall dudes. So <laughs> I'm not saying go find so why, some. Why are they going to have like the trifecta, short, hairy, and funny? It though? is like, just the same, guns. <laughs> I've never heard saying. that saying. So that's why I'm asking. I'm I definitely used to say it all the time in college, so I don't know why. You were not listening. I was saying it, but you were not. You did not listen. <laughs> when your older ones are giving you oh, free advice. <laughs> advice. Yes, that's what I used to say. When people be like, yeah, I'll talk. I'm like, maybe that's not. These are all things on a paper, a piece of paper. What about the intangibles that we can't put on a piece of paper? What about the person's soul? What about their heart? What about their, you know, their relationship with their family, their relationship with God, their relationship with other people? How do they treat wage staff? With kids, how are they going to help you take care of this whole what thing? What are their apply expectations to about yes. that? Yes. Because people because... only have the conversations of, oh, who's going to change the kid? Like, <laughs> you need to go deeper than that. <laughs> what is their belief system <laughs> when yeah. it comes to bringing somebody in the home to come and help? Yep. Like, all of that is very important. And I think with our generations, there are all these, meh, there, there are shifts, but it's still pretty traditional. And I think it's not just an African-American thing. It's just yeah. patriarchal systems. Yeah. Or we have all these stats about women and work from home and how they are the ones struggling. Yeah. Because having to quit their jobs, working, teaching their kids, cooking, and husbands are generally, you know, on Zoom. Um, so if you don't want that to be your situation, really making sure that you have the conversations about that and understand that. Because I think, too, with African communities, we do, we can still be traditional in those structures. And a lot of aunties raise their sons to, you know, expect a woman who can make good jollof rice and a goosey soup and you know 
do the laundry, have five, six kids, just hold it all together, still look great. And, you know, he is the quintessential African father. That That is a dynamic that a lot of people yes. grow up expecting. Yes, yes. Um, and so, yeah, in, in order for you to be introspective, in order for you to get somebody who has done the work and been introspective, you kind of need to do it yourself so you yeah. can speak to other people. Who, yes. Who have it. Um, yes. And again, my mother said so. It's just not good enough reason sometimes it is like maybe you're super wise and she know you know there's some it's just like with anything right there's some parents who force their kids to study a particular thing yeah and it works out and the kid is really grateful but if your mama don't know that you've been you know dipping out the house at midnight every night for the past five years to go hang out with whoever if your mama don't know about your weed stash, if your mama don't know the things, <laughs> you know. Can I kind of expose yourself? If your time? mama don't know about your hobbies. No, I don't have those issues. Like, um, my family is very, like, whatever. I've, we talked about that. We talked about that on our episode about socioeconomic status. Right. My family never really pushed, study what you love, be who you will. Um my family would never pick a partner for me. There were times I wish they would. I'm like, this would be so much easier if I could, if you knew an auntie who had a son and we could just make this happen. But that wasn't, that wasn't my... my... The auntie's sons always came with issues. Because... Oh, <laughs> I mean, I saw arranged situations that seemed pretty, they seemed like a good deal if you got the right, parents working together and the right kids with the right frame of mind so I wasn't necessarily against it but it just wasn't an option um for me but so I'm not gonna knock it I'm just saying that like whatever situations that you have really think about who is guiding you really yeah. think about what you want and whether they have the best context I think the best analogy is um you know in college we had to fill out these questionnaires about our personalities and whether we're messy, nocturnal or not. And that questionnaire is how they pa paired us up with roommates. I, I filled mine out truthfully. And thankfully, <laughs> the woman who ended up being my roommate. Why, why are you insinuating that people, well. people did not fill it out truthfully? Some people <laughs> filled it out with their parents over their shoulder. And so they couldn't check the boxes that they okay. smoked or that they did x y and z and then they ended up with roommates situations that were not great so um you know if that's the case for like your first i never even consider that some people didn't do it by themselves and that may have been why folks had such I, people roommates who were so different from i think some of it some didn't do it by themselves and some of it some of them were not real if you have a maid who cleans up after you 24 seven, you are not neat. And so then you go to a college dorm and you don't know how to do laundry and it oh gets- God, that's introspection. I mean, if <laughs> my room is neat, I am a neat person. Like, you what need to really, <laughs> really reflect. <laughs> okay? <laughs> that is the name of the game. Really reflect on who you are and what you are so you can stand in you can't stand in your truth if you don't know what your truth is. That's all I'm saying, Nance. So to to you, to everyone else who's thinking about it, to those of you who want baby kids, who don't want no baby kids, who want to be married, who don't want to be married, who want an Oprah Stedman situation, which is, you know. I mean, I, that's, a, that's a prime role model right there. You know, I mean, Oprah doesn't have children, but she has like a million South African girls who she's, you know, continue to support and really helping to... to mold and shape to be the leaders of tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you can't, you can't even get to that point without doing, taking the time and giving yourself that grace to really reflect on what it is you like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. um, and we do it for food. You wouldn't Wait. eat. How introspective are you with your food? Will you eat pizza with anchovies on it? If you don't like anchovies. I try. You. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. In being introspective is thinking about it. It's actually trying certain things. Right. Like, don't just go by what you have on the paper or don't just go by what it's easier said than done. What society tells you to do. If you are a woman and you don't want no kids and you don't want no man, stand in that truth. If you're a woman and you want kids and you want another woman, stand in that truth, which is, again, 
easy for me to say because that's not my situation, but the more that we of our generation speak to it, speak on it and are open about it, the easier it will be for, you know, our children. Um, I suspect that my children are not going to even be conflicted um, about this stuff because I'm going to model and make it clear to them and be open about the fact that like there are different kinds of adults. There are different kinds of endpoints for adult relationships and it's up to you to figure out what it is that you want. Basically, the takeaway here is be introspective in life. Be introspective. Do. Look at what people do. Look at what they say. The person going, oh, yeah, yeah, kids are great. And then you go to the restaurant and a kid is crying and or a kid, a cute kid passes by and they're frowning. That probably means. You're speaking from experience there, sis? No, I know people, <laughs> you know, you know, folk. I know people who don't like kids. I have friends who don't like kids okay. and they, you know, they're very open they about that point. Home. Yeah, they're very open about that point. But like, yeah, just going back to your point about like how some people lie. Yeah, they might like be lying to themselves. But if you know what you know, you will not be, hopefully, you're less likely to be hoodwinked yeah. or to be fooled by, you know, a nice package um, and really be able to focus in on, okay, this is what I want. And so if you're going to help me get there, then let's take this ride together. But if you're not, then I'm about to get me a different Uber. Because my destination is where it needs to be. And with that. You did, how long did you spend working on that analogy? <laughs> Bunkyo speaks in Bunkyo, analogy all the, all the time. All the time. If you know that. They roll off my tongue. I'm going to get another Uber and because we may have been different destinations. Yeah, this Uber of love, this Uber of life. Mm-mm. <laughs> I want to exhale. I want one that's comfortable with water, you know, bottled water in the back, maybe some mints even. Uh, place to charge my phone. I just, as, as my young self used to say, have two seats. <laughs> <laughs> it needs. Otherwise, like, what are we, what are we doing here? Unless you don't want that. And then in which case, you know, you should be able to live your life in peace and do X, Y, and Z. But um, this was a funny conversation. I support you, Nans, whether you, you want I'm, I'm glad we can laugh about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's, what's there to, I mean, why not be open? Why not say what people want to say? I know we're both people who want partnership and want children, but um, it is nice to acknowledge that, like, if you don't, that's okay, too. Yeah. So that's a, the lesson we hope you take from today, along with the importance of introspection. Thank you so much for listening. Ciao. Yeah.